In the last video, I showed the creation of this quantity per day measure. And between videos, I took the liberty of improving this little simple report a little bit by adding these data bar conditional formats here, and also by fixing the uh, the number formatting so that it was always a consistent number of decimal places. And that makes it a lot easier just to click around in the slicers and see very quickly uh, which sort of products, what products, how they perform in various temperature ranges uh, at the date of sale. And uh, so that's pretty cool, just sort of an added bonus there between, between videos. But uh, my, my real purpose in this, this video is to show how, um, how to create that quantity per day measure. And I, I did show it briefly in the last video, but I'm going to explain how it works in this one. So just as a quick refresher, uh, it's a, the measure is based in the fact internet sales table. That's essentially the home table or fact table. Uh, here's the name of the measure that I gave it. And then it's just the sum of the order quantity, which makes sense, divided by this count rows of distinct uh, against the order date key uh, column. And uh, so, you know, it's rather than just have you um, follow that pattern, I want to dive into it a little bit and give you some background so that you can recreate formulas like this and similar ones um, without having to just kind of follow the pattern. I'm going to switch over to PowerPoint and uh, lay out a few rules up front. This is a two-slide PowerPoint presentation and by the time you get through this you will know, I promise you will know uh, pretty much 99% of the magic behind DAX and you'll be able to do amazing things with pivot tables and pivot charts that you never thought you could do before. And uh, so if ever you get confused with uh, writing DAX measures, just come back and watch these two slides. And uh, I, I'm very hopeful that that will, that will be all you need to know. OK, so uh, the first two golden rules are things that I've already told you uh, in the previous video, but just a quick recap. So the home table, that's where my numeric columns are located. Uh, like, I'm going to be summing something up, so quantity in this example. Wherever the quantity column is, that's generally speaking where you, what you're going to set your home table to. Uh, if you, there are other cases, I suppose, you set your home table to something else, but those are going to be a bit more advanced. Uh, no naked columns. So you always have to wrap your columns in aggregation functions. This is not like a calculated column calculated columns, you can do quantity plus something else. But here you always have to have sum of quantity or there's, you know, there's a whole bunch of aggregation functions. Even the count rows function is, a, is an aggregation function. So um, always have to have an aggregation function on the outside. Those are the two recap rules. Third rule, uh, the calculations, when you're thinking about the calculations that you're building, it's tempting to think of them as happening in the context of the pivot table itself. Like you're, you're taking a sum and you're, you think of it maybe as summing other cells in the pivot table. That is not the way to think about DAX. You really need to think about DAX in terms of it's summing up things or aggregating things back in the source tables, uh, back in the power pivot window. Um, and that helps you, and then eventually those results are displayed in the pivot table, but it's, you really need to think about it in terms of summing up things uh, from the source tables. Um, yeah, so columns back in the power pivot window. Okay, this is probably the most important thing. If you, uh, if you remember one thing from this video, remember this, and then everything else is just a little bit easier to fill in, if, you know, with little details. There are two phases to a DAX measure calculation. It's filter, then it's calculate. Filter, then calculate. Very important. I want to drive that home a lot. It's two phases, filter, then calculate. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's filter, then calculate. Got it? Okay, good. Well, I, I do. I kind of mean it to be annoying because I want you to remember it. These are, this is really the, the key to it. If you think about it this way, you will, you will understand how DAX works, I promise. And then lastly, I'll, in these la numbers four and five, I'll explain these on the, on the next slide in, in, in detail. But um, when you're th in the filtering phase, it's, it's even though we don't necessarily, we don't actually calculate this way because it would be pretty slow, it is very useful to think about things on a cell-by-cell -cell basis, and I'll, I'll show what I mean there. So uh, here is the report, and I added an extra slicer to the report just to to demonstrate uh, some concepts, but it's the, otherwise it's the it's basically the same report. Um, and 
Here is the a very simplified version of our home table. This is the simplified version of the fact internet sales table. Uh, and I mentioned that we want to go cell by cell. So let's focus in for now just on this one cell, pretending that we were calculating something uh, in that position of the, of the pivot table. And I, I still have some of order quantity here, but it really should have been my quantity per, uh, per day measure. But anyway, just structurally speaking from the report, imagine we're focusing in on this cell, uh, this, this, this coordinate. And when we're in the filtering phase, remember it's filter, then calculate. So we're in the filtering phase. One of the filters we have is, is accessories. That's one of the coordinates of this cell. Everything that we select here in the slicers um, is a coordinate of this cell, but it also is, you know, this is this number clearly corresponds to accessories. And if we'd put um, product category on a slicer instead of on rows here, and then clicked accessories within that slicer, it would have exactly the same effect on the number that we get as putting it here. So it's just coordinates. We've got a coordinate here. So we're going to take that accessories filter, and we're going to apply it to the to the home table, and we're going to filter out all of the rows that don't match. So, and we don't actually have an accessories label in this table. What we do have is a product category ID, and the product category table, which is related to this table, is what is used to pr provide that translation. So, by way of the product category table, we un we can understand that accessories is really product category one, and so everything that's not product category one gets filtered out. And my table, my table, you know, in a virtual sense, my table gets a lot smaller. Then we repeat this process for the warm coordinate from the temperature range table. And again, I don't have warm in this table, but I do have a table, the temperature table, that translates warm into actually a list of regions. There's a, a list of region, actually region and month ID, region and month uh, combinations that have warm associated with them in the temperature table, and so we use that list. So anything in this table that is not corresponding to that list of region month IDs uh, from the temperature table gets filtered out, so we lose some more rows. And then lastly, we take the calendar year table, and once again, it goes through an intermediate table, the date table, and 2003 translates into a list of date IDs. There's a whole bunch of dates, obviously within 2003. So we wipe out anything that's associated with 2003. So that's the filter phase. We've applied all of the coordinates, really all three coordinates of this cell uh, as filters to our, our home table. And we've got a much smaller home table now. And then when we move into the calculate phase, so take for instance the, the first term in our calculation, which is sum of order quantity, well that just operates against whatever's left over. So it's uh, now a sum of what's left of this table on, in the order quantity table, and it's just those rows that are remaining. Now, it's a similar sort of thing for the denominator, and the denominator in this case is two uh, functions nested inside of each other. Let's start with the innermost one first. It's distinct of order date key, and that's going to operate, the distinct function is going to operate again on the, just on the filtered rows and just as one column. And the distinct function, what it does is build a virtual table in memory of just the distinct values of the column that you selected. So in this particular case, you only see three order date key values, and they are, they are distinct from one another. But there will be in the overall table, in a much larger you know, sampling of this table, there will be many, many uh, repeated order date keys. And what the distinct uh, function does is create a one column table of just the distinct values so each duplicated dates only count once and that's exactly what we want it's a table of, in of distinct dates and then the count rows function here uh, just takes the uh, you know just gives us the count of the rows so that's this will give us the count of the dates remaining uh, on which we uh, which which they had products sold in this that corresponds to this cell and uh, that gives us the, the right denominator for our average. Okay, so that's it. Um, pretty simple uh, example. Um, if you have any questions, please, please, please uh, post comments on my blog, and I'll be happy to address those.
and uh, any feedback that you have I also would very much like to hear if this was a, a good example or a difficult to understand example um, I would love to hear that and uh, thank you very much I'll see you next time